to welcome back after the break. Uh, before we went for our break, we just looked at uh, a brief introduction to what we will be studying in this uh, APC publication, the book uh, Kingdom Builders. Okay. And uh, we will look at uh, chapter one. So if you can all, uh, you know, open to your PDF copies, uh, this book Kingdom Builders, I think I've already put that on the, uh, you know, in the course content, or you can even find it in our uh, APC publication. Uh, do you all have access to that, the APC publication Kingdom Builders? Yes, Pastor. Okay. What about the others? Okay, you can uh, go to uh, our website and uh, on our website, you can go to the resources at publication, uh, English books, and then there you can find uh, uh, this publication, uh, uh, Kingdom Builders. Okay, so we can follow along with us, it will follow along with me and the rest of us, it will be nice. Okay, so we're looking at the first chapter, uh, the kingdom and the church. Now, this is uh, something that we already studied uh, in uh, the book, uh, uh, The Kingdom of God. Uh, we looked at the king and his kingdom in chapter two and uh, the church, uh, the kingdom of God, we looked at it in chapter three. So uh, what we are just going to look in chapter one will just be uh, reiterating of a few things that we uh, already have um, learned in uh, the book, um, uh, The Kingdom of God in chapters two and three, okay? So we know that, um, you know, the words or the terms, uh, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of uh, heaven are used interchangeably. Uh, they uh, mean one and the same, okay? Uh, the kingdom of God actually describes whose kingdom it is, it is God's kingdom, and the kingdom of heaven uh, is actually revealing to us that, uh, that, that the kingdom of God originates uh, from a realm that is outside of this world, that is not part of this world, uh, and it's also revealing to us that it is a, a kingdom from heaven, and hence it is a spiritual kingdom, uh, it belongs to a spiritual realm called heaven, and uh, that's why Jesus said in John chapter 18, verse 36, my kingdom is not of this world. So we already looked uh, at, uh, you know, these terms, uh, kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven. We studied this in chapter one uh, of, uh, uh, you know, the kingdom, uh, the, the book, uh, the kingdom of God. Okay. So uh, we also saw in chapter two that uh, we also learned that, you know, uh, that God is the king of it, the kingdom. Okay. Uh, he's the who's the king of this kingdom? It is God Himself who is the king, and uh, we know that His kingdom, uh, uh, you know, is one where we see uh, the king's rule. Uh, we see His dominion. It's a place where He reigns, uh, where His uh, lordship is extended, where we can uh, where we can see His power and His influence, and also it's a place. Uh, uh, the kingdom of God is a place where the king's will is established and all that he purposes, all that he wants to do, uh, even before that he had planned and purposed, even before the foundations of the world, uh, that is what he does or brings about and accomplishes in and through his uh, kingdom. Also, we know that, uh, uh, you know, his kingdom rules over all. Okay, uh, like we read in Psalm 103, verse 19, uh, the Lord established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all. Okay, and uh, who uh, initiated or introduced the kingdom into our realm? It is uh, Jesus himself who, uh, you know, who uh, introduced the kingdom uh, of God uh, when he said, you know, the uh, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Okay, we've already looked at this. So all of what we are going to say in today, in the first chapter is just reiterating what we had already studied uh, in the previous book. Okay, and we know that uh, uh, Jesus came to bring in, uh, us into the kingdom. 
uh, and you know he also came to bring the kingdom to us so there are two things that he did he came to bring the kingdom of god or the kingdom of heaven to us uh, he just wanted us to show, uh, show, he wanted to show us how God's kingdom is, uh, what is, uh, you know, it's a kingdom of power, it's a kingdom of love, it's a kingdom of forgiveness, compassion, uh, it's a kingdom where the king is not just a ruler who treats us like his slaves, but it's a kingdom where the king is a father, you know, so it reveals the father heart of God, uh, uh, of this king, who is the king of the kingdom, and, uh, you know, it, and and also Jesus brought the kingdom into our lives so he brought the kingdom of God to us and he also brought the kingdom of God uh, into us uh, which means when he died on the on the cross you know uh, he made a way for us to be part of the kingdom he made a way for us to come back uh, to God, to be his sons and daughters, to be heirs of God and co-heirs with um, uh, Christ uh, Jesus. So, you know, uh, uh, we know that we have, um, we were once living in uh, in the kingdom of darkness, kingdom of Satan, kingdom of uh, slavery and sin and death, uh, but we have been delivered um, uh, from that kingdom, you know, uh, uh, like we read in, uh, and we've been ushered into the kingdom of uh, light, uh, as we read in Colossians chapter 1, verse 13, where it says, He has delivered us from the powers of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love, in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins. So, through the blood of Jesus, we have redemption. Uh, we have forgiveness of sins, and hence we are have been, uh, uh, you know, conveyed from, uh, delivered from the power of darkness, and conveyed into the kingdom of God, or the kingdom of um, heaven. And we also know that the kingdom of God is established in our hearts. Okay, um, Luke chapter seventeen, verse twenty-one. Uh, you know, Jesus says, "Nor will they say, see here or see there, for indeed the kingdom of God is." within you so we we've uh, we've spoken quite a lot about this reiterated this over and over again so the kingdom of god is a spiritual kingdom you know when we are born again we are born our spirit man is born again we are born again uh, and we experience a spiritual aspect of the kingdom of god or the spiritual dimension uh, of the kingdom of um, god where the, uh, the the king's rule domain uh, power authority is all in our hearts and in our lives and through us it's released or penetrates uh, into our world uh, we also know that you know once we become children of god we are adopted uh, into god's family uh, by the spirit of adoption the holy spirit that tells us that we are sons and daughters reminds us of our standing who we are our identity so if anyone asks you what is your birth certificate you have to just show them romans chapter 8 verse 17 you know where it talks about that we have been adopted into uh, you know by the uh, by the uh, the spirit of adoption uh, of being sons of being children of god of uh, and that's why we are called heirs of god and joint heirs with um, Christ. And we also know that, uh, you know, uh, just like God gave when he created Adam and Eve, he put them in the garden, he told them to, uh, he blessed them and asked them to, mu to multiply and also to have dominion and to subdue. So, you know, uh, that means to rule, to uh, have dominion, to subdue the evil one. But we see that, you know, um, uh, they, uh, uh, when they sinned, uh, they gave over the rights of ownership to Satan, they became his slaves. And uh, when Jesus died on the cross, he purchased back, uh, you know, that uh, the authority uh, that is ours. And he has vested that authority to the church and the church comprises of uh, you and me. So he's given us the keys of the kingdom. He's given us the authority and he has given us back uh, the authority to rule and have dominion uh, on the uh, Earth. And uh, we also know that we are called uh, the sons of the kingdom of God, as we read in Matthew chapter 13, verse uh, 38. We also saw that, you know, the kingdom of God is a pervasive kingdom. Uh, it extends to all of uh, human life, uh, uh, like we read in um, 
Matthew chapter 13, uh, verses 31 to 33, where it says, you know, the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, you know, which a man took uh, and sowed it in his field, you know, uh, which is the smallest of all seeds. But when it grows, uh, you know, it grows into this, it's greater than all the other herbs. It becomes a tree so that the birds of the air can come and nest in its uh, branches. And also we see, uh, you know, uh, in verse um, uh, 33 he says uh, uh, Jesus spoke another parable and he said that the kingdom of God is like a leaven in which a woman took and uh, you know and hid in three measures of meal till it was all leave it okay so uh, we are that uh, uh, like we just said uh, in the first hour of our class you know we are that mustard seed that leaven um, uh, uh, that God is uh, you know uh, uh, you know we might be small but God is going to use us uh, uh, to you know to extend uh, his kingdom uh, into all spheres of our human life okay so there are two aspects of the kingdom that we saw uh, it's a spiritual aspect, which I just said, there's also the natural dimension uh, or the literal kingdom that will be established. Uh, we also looked at uh, this uh, in a whole chapter in uh, the book, The Kingdom of God. And um, we know that uh, when Jesus comes again, he will establish uh, his kingdom. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end, like we read in Luke chapter 1, verse 33. We also looked at the various uh, uh, aspects of, um, uh, you know, about this king and his kingdom and his government by looking at the, the various names in, uh, in Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and um, 7. Uh, we looked at, um, you know, um, how Isaiah unfolds the aspects of the government. Uh, that the Son of God would administer when he comes back and, um, you know, um, he points back to his names, all the names that we uh, we see in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, as ascribed to God that, uh, you know, a wonderful counselor, a prince of peace, mighty God, everlasting um, Father. Okay, so all of, uh, we saw that the names of God are an expression of who he is, and uh, he wants his kingdom here on earth to be an expression of who he is uh, and what he does. That to be, uh, you know, uh, revealed in and through his uh, kingdom. Okay, and we also know that when he comes, he will establish uh, the throne. Uh, he'll, uh, you know, there will be no end to his kingdom, um, and he will uh, bring about order and justice uh, uh, from that time forward to ev and forever more okay and uh, uh, we also looked at or learned that in that uh, millennium kingdom that god will establish here the physical kingdom you know each one of us who are saints who are believers will uh, be given this different responsibility different positions according to our um, our faithful the according to faithful uh, according to how faithful we have been in uh, what we have done and what God has entrusted to us here while we are living this uh, our life in the in the spiritual dimension of the kingdom so you know sometimes we think that uh, you know there's no point in being faithful uh, I don't see any rewards uh, you know um, I'm just suffering uh, I'm just laboring hard for the Lord um, but you know there's nothing that I'm receiving but you know we need to just endure we need to persevere we need to fix our eyes on Jesus continue running our race because there will be a reward in the millennium in kingdom you know depending on how faithful we have been how good stewards we have been of what god has uh, entrusted to us how we have been engaging with the, this world in um and and bringing about multiplication uh, for what god is looking at produce multiplication productivity uh you know based on that we will be given ranks orders uh uh places of position in the uh administration of the physical kingdom that God or the literal kingdom that God will establish when he comes here on the um, earth okay and we know that you know all of this is something that God had already planned even before the foundations of the uh, world okay his uh, uh, and he has invited us to inherit this kingdom that is he had prepared for us even before the foundation of the world as we read in Matthew chapter 25 verse uh, 34. And so since we've received uh, such a kingdom, 
uh, you know, we need to, um, you know, uh, serve God in a way that is acceptable to him uh, and also that will bring about reverence and godly fear. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 28. Okay, so all this we've already looked at. We're just kind of reiterating what we had studied. Um, the kingdom of God and the church, um, you know, um, uh, now, the kingdom of God that we see in the present uh, 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 time is, uh, this is in a spiritual form. And uh, when, when Jesus uh, died on the cross, you know, he took back the keys of authority from Satan. Uh, he gave it, uh, he gave those keys of authority or uh, he gave the kingdom to the church. And the church is basically the body of Christ. So the church is part of the kingdom of God. And it represents his kingdom here on um, earth. Okay. And hence we are called uh, to pray uh, like Jesus taught us in Matthew chapter 6 verse 10. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And if you look at uh, this verse in Matthew chapter 16 verses 18 and 19. Uh, we know that, um, you know, um, we have been given the keys of authority. Uh Verse 19, it says, and I will give you the keys, the kingdom of uh, heaven. Keys means uh, assembles authority. And uh, we can also, you know, we've been given the authority to come uh, against uh, uh, the gates of Hades, okay, uh, the gates of hell. Uh, we have been given the power and the authority to overthrow and overpower the gates of hell. We know that gates are places of importance of um, uh, where, you know, there's uh, uh, people have access to come in or, you know, are restricted from coming in as well. And in, in, in Jesus' time, uh, gates also resembled places where, you know, judgments would be passed at the gates, you know, people would, uh, the elders would sit and they would uh, uh, bring about justice and they would pass judgments. So um, um, uh, gates actually also resemble, play, uh, you know, demonic uh, uh, influence, demonic domination, uh, demonic authority and power and uh, the church has to advance against the gates of hell now the gates don't move they're stationary you know so the church has to you know uh, go against uh, the kingdom of god we have to engage uh, in tearing down uh, the forces of uh, darkness and pulling down uh, uh, the centers of demonic uh, domination on the earth. And God has given us the keys. The keys, the keys is, uh, symbolizes authority. Okay. Not only have we been given authority and power, but just as Jesus, uh, you know, who ushered in the kingdom, he proclaimed, he taught, he preached uh, the kingdom of God in the same way. Likewise, uh, we need to preach and teach um, uh, uh, about the kingdom of God. Um, and also we need to, you know, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, uh, because freely we have received, freely we need to um, give. And we need to teach people, um, uh, you know, how to live according to kingdom thinking, kingdom culture, and grow in kingdom lifestyle. Okay. Um, that, that was just a quick review uh, of what we've been studying. Uh, we also know that the church is um, a spiritual body um, uh, because the kingdom of God is in a spiritual form and hence the church is a spiritual body, uh, but it's a spiritual body consisting of all believers, uh, consisting of people, um, uh, and hence it has a natural expression in people uh, uh, because, you know, uh, people comprise the church and it's uh, who are the people who comprise the church is those who have been redeemed by the blood of the uh, lamb. OK, so we don't fight against each other because each one of us has been redeemed by the blood of the lamb. Uh, we are precious in God's sight. So we honor, respect, love each other. Uh, we esteem uh, others uh, more than we can esteem ourselves uh, because each one of us uh, are precious in God's sight because we have been redeemed by the blood of the um, Lamb. 
okay so even as uh, we are believers and we belong to the body of christ but yet there are different uh, denominations there are different uh, uh, groups of people there are different uh, churches based on our culture based on the way we worship uh, our per personal preferences our individual pre pre uh, preferences um, and uh, you know um, all of these uh, are natural differences because this is how we like to worship god uh, this is how some other people like to worship god but you know these have become uh, sadly have become reasons for separation or division in the body of um, uh, christ um, and it has caused the church to be a divided house and a divided uh, kingdom so the whole purpose of um, you know studying this book uh, uh, on kingdom builders is to help us, uh, you know, as kingdom builders to rise above all our natural opinions, our natural preferences, our natural differences of the way we worship, uh, uh, what uh, style of worship we are comfortable with, how we like to worship God. Uh, it's all okay to do that, but we need to make sure that, you know, uh, it does not separate us, but we need to work together in establishing the kingdom of God. So we need to remember that, you know, each of us in our own denominations, uh, we are not a kingdom by ourselves, you know, we are just part of that body of Christ and uh, we all belong to that one uh, kingdom, which we need to keep in mind, okay? So, um, anyone has any questions about uh, lesson one? We just kind of um, uh, reiterated all that we've been studying. Any questions? Are all of you with me? Am I too fast? Can we have some responses, please. All of you with me? Or am I too fast? I need to slow down my pace. Okay, it's only one yes from one person. Okay, um, so here on page number nine in your book, there is a chorus called Majesty. Uh, anyone knows that song? Anyone knows the song? Jeffina, you know the song? No? Zelatoli, do you sing the song in your church? Okay. Okay. John Paul, you like to sing for us? <laughs> it really wasn't. <laughs> Sorry? No. Uh... Yeah, we can sing it. You can lead us. We'll all mute our mics and we we'll, can all sing. And you can lead us. Is that okay, John? Uh, yes, Pastor. Uh, majesty, worship His Majesty unto Jesus. Be all glory, honor, and praise, majesty, kingdom authority flows from his throne unto his own, his and the so exalt, lift up on high the name of Jesus. Magnify, come glorify Christ Jesus the King. Majesty. Worship His Majesty unto Jesus. Be all glory, honor, and praise, Majesty. 
kingdom authority flows from his throne unto his own his and reigns thank you so much john uh, it just uh, just you know some of these uh, choruses and hymns that are you know uh, in this uh, publication so powerful just reminds us uh, you know, even as kingdom builders, it's so important for us to know that, uh, you know, uh, who is the king of the kingdom. Uh, sometimes we can come and take that place uh, of the king. And so here it says that, you know, uh, Jesus who died now glorified king of all kings. He's a king of all kings. Um, uh, and we need to magnify his name. Uh, we need to give him the glory, honor, and praise in the way we serve him, in the way we um, relate with him, uh, in the way we adore him, and the way we honor him in everything that we do. Okay. Okay, we'll move on to chapter 2, uh, Christ the King of the Kingdom. Okay. Uh, Christ the King of the Kingdom. Um now, uh, just uh, you know, mentioned there is uh, Apostle Paul, who was used uh, greatly and mightily by God, uh, you know, to establish and expand uh, God's kingdom. And uh, you know, we see him as a true kingdom uh, builder, one whose heart was, you know, set on uh, uh, was set on uh, glorifying Christ and uh, seeing His uh, kingdom come okay uh and that's what paul says you know uh, in many places he mentions this but uh, just one place where i would like to you know bring to your attention is philippians chapter 3 verse 8 here he says you know i count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of christ jesus my lord for whom i have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish that i may gain christ okay so here we see, uh, you know, Paul saying that, um, you know, uh, he was he's a he's a great scholar. He studied un under uh, Gamaliel. He studied under great scholars. He knows uh, all of the Old Testament, the Torah, the laws, everything. But he says, you know, everything that he has achieved, he considers as a loss. Uh, uh, you know, uh, compared to uh, the knowledge of Jesus Christ, uh, his Lord. And uh, he says, you know, suffer the loss of all things and count them as rubbish that I may gain uh, Christ. Okay, so we see that, you know, Paul was, um, his heart was set on uh, glorifying Christ and seeing uh, uh, his uh, uh, kingdom uh, come. We just like to uh, point um, uh, two references here uh, and also mention that, you know, when you look at read Paul's epistles, you know, uh, he always begins by saying in uh, in a few episodes, he says, you know, uh, Paul, a born servant of Christ Jesus. Uh, you know, what does he mean? Paul, a born servant of Christ Jesus is basically saying that, you know, he's, uh, he's a born slave to Christ by choice. Uh, which means, you know, uh, a slave, uh, which is very, um, uh, you know, a, a concept that was very uh, evident, uh, prevailing in uh, in Jesus's time, uh, Paul's time, you know, uh, uh, where slaves were sold in the slave market, and but slaves were free to, uh, uh, you know, to go uh, after serving their masters for seven years. But after seven years, if they still want to stay with their uh, with their master uh, because they love their masters their masters have been kind to them you now they can they can choose to live with their master for the rest of their life uh you know willing to submit to them uh, willing to take orders from them willing to willing to do anything uh for them so it's the choice that they do willingly and you know and they uh for these bond servants they actually pierce their ears uh so it just shows that you know they are bond servants for life and so paul is saying that you know a paul a bond servant of christ jesus which means that you know he's saying that you know willingly by choice i have chosen to uh you know submit to uh, jesus christ to serve him for the rest of my life uh, uh to do everything that uh, i have to do to 
build uh, his kingdom. And so we also read, you know, in the book of Corinthians where he talks uh, a couple of verses where he says all the sufferings that he has gone through, how many uh, times he's be beaten, the rods, the whips that he's taken. He suffered so much for, uh, for Christ. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 10 to 11, he says, no, I'm always, Paul is saying, I'm always carrying uh, in my body um, uh, 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 the, the the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ, the life of Jesus can also be manifested in uh, my body. So he says, for who for we who live are always being delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So Paul is saying, you know, in my body I carry the marks of, uh, you know, always being delivered to death. We know that, you know, Paul was also persecuted, he was beaten up, uh, you you know, uh, he was put into prison, he was whipped, uh, uh, but he says he, he he's, you know, willing to do all that for the sake of Jesus Christ, okay, that the life of Jesus Christ can be manifested in his body that has is being delivered to that day in and uh, day out, okay, and, uh, you know, one of the examples uh, we can read is in Acts chapter 14 verses 19 to 21, um, you know, uh, uh, Paul goes to uh, the places in Galatia, he's preaching and teaching there, uh, you know, uh, the cities in Galatia, Iconium, Lystra, Derby, um, and so he goes uh, uh, from Antioch, Antioch to these places and uh, the Jews in these cities, you know, they persuade the crowds and uh, they stone Paul. Okay, and we know that uh, stoning uh, basically in the Old Testament uh, concept is stoning a person until they are dead. And so we read that, uh, you know, Paul was dragged out of the city, uh, supposing him to be dead. So they thought he's dead because he's stoned like Stephen. They just drag him and put him out of the uh, city. Uh, however, when it says in verse 20 of Acts chapter 14, However, when the disciples gathered around him, he rose up and went into the city. Now, isn't that amazing? Because a man who's been stoned and left for dead, you know, uh, uh, must be having, uh, his, you know, uh, wounds and cuts. And, uh, he, you know, just imagine he got up himself instead of being put on a stretcher and bandaged. He walks into the city. And it says, amazingly there, uh, and the next day in the same uh, verse 20 of chapter 14, it says, and the next day he departed with Barnabas to Derby. And verse 21, he says, and they had preached the gospel to that city and made many disciples and returned to Lystra, Iconium, and Antioch, strengthening the souls of the disciples, exhorting them to continue in the faith and saying, we must through many tribulations enter the kingdom of God. I mean, isn't this just so amazing? The man has been stoned, and, you know, and he's stoned and he's just fallen and, uh, you know, he's in a state where he's almost dying, but he rise, raises up, you know, by himself. He's not put on a stretcher. He goes in the city and the very next day he goes to Derby with Barnabas. And what does he go to do? He goes to preach the gospel in that city. And when he preaches the gospel there, he makes many disciples and he comes back. You know, to the same city where they persecuted him, they stoned him, they left him for dead. He comes and what is he doing? He's strengthening the souls of the disciples there and exhorting them to continue in the faith and saying that we must go through tribulations to enter the kingdom of God. So what Paul actually said in um, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 10 to 11, makes so much of sense because he's saying he's always been delivered to death for Jesus' sake, but the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal bodies. So what he's saying is, you know, the power, the resurrection power, the life of Jesus, the Zoe life of Jesus can also be manifested in our mortal bodies. So even as we go through, uh, you know, given, even as we go a uh, uh, journey in life, you know, as kingdom builders, there will be times when we will, uh, you know, go through persecution, challenges, difficulties, but we need to know that in all of the situations, the life of Jesus will also be manifested. The Zoe life, the fullness of life, the God kind of life. Uh, uh, the power of God will be uh, manifested in our mortal uh, flesh. Like we see here what Paul does. And nothing stops him from 
you know, advancing the kingdom of God and giving glory to uh, Christ Jesus. He, nothing stops him from seeing the kingdom of God established in the lives of people. Okay, so let's just look at uh, one reference here uh, on page number 13, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses, uh, verse 6 and verses 9 to 11. Can somebody read that please? 1 Corinthians 3, uh, verse 6 and 9 to 11. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6, 9 to 11. I planted, Apollo is watered, but God gave the increase. For we are God's fellow workers, you are God's field, you are God's building. According to the grace of God which was given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another builds on it. But let each one take heed how he builds on it, for no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jeffina. So there's several important things that we can learn here. Uh, Paul is saying that the church represents uh, a field uh, where there are many workers and these workers must, uh, you know, uh, 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 cooperate with each other uh, in uh, tilling the ground and sowing the seeds and taking care of the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the plants that are growing uh, so that they can reap a rich harvest. So it's not just one man's job, but it, uh, you know, the church represents a field where there are different workers doing their own uh, jobs to help in uh, reaping a great harvest. And he's also saying that, you know, the church is compared uh, to a building you know, where the walls are raised up uh, together by co-workers. So, you know, in the kingdom of God, all of us are co-workers, okay? Um, uh, you know, and that because we are co-workers uh, is, uh, you know, uh, uh, enables us or what it is what makes us to be kingdom uh, builders. We're all here uh, to build his kingdom. Okay, I think this is something that we need to, uh, you know, take heart. We need to hold on to that, you know, we are here to build his kingdom. We are here to build God's kingdom and not our own uh, kingdom. So here Paul is uh, comparing uh, the, uh, the church to God's field and God's uh, uh, building, uh, you know, and uh, uh, as being co-workers in God's field and God's uh, building, we need to, uh, you know, uh, help in, in growth, in production, in doing our job and not quarreling with each other. We know that if the workers quarrel with each other, then, you know, work cannot be done, no can be done in the field, no harvest can, uh, you know, they, there won't be a harvest that can be uh, reaped. Uh, we also know if workers do not, um, you know, cooperate with each other and work together in building a building, uh, you know, uh, things will get um, delayed okay so you know um, uh, being co-workers with God it means that we work together uh, in unity in oneness to achieve what God uh, desires he achieves and we uh, all be uh, you know a part of this building the church and we're all one and uh, you know unity is so important for the godhead you know remember in john chapter 17 uh, the high priestly prayer uh, jesus prayed father let them be one let them means he's talking about the believers says let them be one as we are one so we see in the trinity there's perfect unity there's perfect oneness even though each one of them have their own roles um you know, um, uh, but we see that even in that, you know, there is perfect unity, there's perfect uh, oneness. So we need to remember that, you know, in the kingdom of God, we need to work uh, with uh, other pastors, other believers, other ministers, uh, you know, uh, uh, bishops and pastors and, um, uh, you know, other saints, all those who are in the church. We need to work with each other and also we see here that kingdom building is all about building people because it says in verse 9 you are God's field you are God's building okay 
And in verse nine and ten, six, nine, and ten, he says, uh, you know, the, uh, another important thing that we can learn is that kingdom building is all about partnership. It's about working together. Okay, so how do we know this? Because Paul says, you know, I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. Okay, so sometimes, you know, God can call us uh, to go to a place where we are just basically doing the groundwork. We are doing the hard work. You know, the hard work of praying, of, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, evangelizing, of uh, meeting people, of learning the language of that place. And then we bring in uh, 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 the people into the church. Uh, the, when, but then God calls us uh, to leave that and to go somewhere else. And then he, or he brings in someone else to nurture the people that we have brought into the church. So we can say, hey, how can God do that? That's unfair. But that is how God works. You know, he, it's not that uh, I plant, I water, I reap, I do everything. It's about co-laboring. It's about co-working. So sometimes God can cause us to do all, and we can say, oh, I did the hard work. I do the dirty job. And this person who comes in, you know, I've set up everything. I have done everything. This person who comes in is uh, having a good time. You know, everything is set up. They just have to continue things. Um, and, you know, they're getting all the credit. Uh, so it's 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 all of them. It's who plant, who water, uh, uh, and the harvest that is reaped. Everybody, you know, gets an equal share. All of them will be rewarded by uh, uh, God. And we looked at this even uh, when we when we we looked at uh, you know uh, Elijah and Elisha. Even though Elisha got a double portion of Elijah's anointing, uh, yet we see that. Uh, you know the prophet will come in the uh, in uh, 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 like like Elijah, okay, not like Elisha, but like Elijah. So you know uh, those who start the work, the pioneers of the work, you know, are the fathers uh, of that work, are the fathers of the faith, and they will be rewarded. They will be given the due recognition. So you know it's all about partnership. And then this person who comes in second, who again works, builds up things, uh, and you know he has to leave, or uh, God calls him, or whatever, you know. And the third person comes in, and he's just reaping the fruits of uh, the hard work done by A and by B. Okay, so it's not the person C who has done everything, but it's everyone together, A, B, and C, who have labored in that place. And that is why, you know, there's a harvest being reaped, and God is a true, just judge. Uh, 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 you know, He's righteous in what He does, He will reward everyone. So you don't worry, you know, say, How can I leave this and go? You know, this is what I started, this is what I did. I can't give it up to somebody else, you know. When God is just calling us out, he's putting somebody else, it is his team, then he will take care, he will bring the right um, uh, stewards, okay? So God can use one man to sow, he can uh, use another man to water, uh, and yet he can use another woman to reap the harvest. Um, uh, so, you know, uh, one man lays the foundation, another one builds on it. Uh, you know, the other one takes it further or just living in the finished work, the grandeur, easiness of everything, uh, regardless of what each one are doing in the different uh, seasons or different times, you know, uh, uh, each one of them, what they have done is equally important and everyone is equally um, important. Okay. Uh, like we read in, um, uh, in Romans uh, uh, chapter 12, Okay, Romans chapter 12, verses um, 14 and 6, 4 to 6. Romans chapter 12, verses 4 and 5. Can somebody read Romans chapter 12, verses 4 and 5? Okay, Romans chapter 12, verse 4 and 5 says, For as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same functions, so we being many are one body in Christ and individually members of one and other. So here it talks about, you know, uh, that each one of us uh, have different members, uh, or different jobs or responsibilities in the body of Christ. 
we are many members. Each one of us have different roles, different responsibility, different gifts that God has given to us. All of us don't do the same function, but each one of us are important. If one of us are not doing the admin work, you know, things will uh, be difficult. If one of, if uh, those of us who have to lead worship don't lead worship, then it will be difficult. Uh, you know, those of us who have to serve, if you are not there to serve, then you know, uh, or set, uh, you know, lay the chairs or. Uh, or clean up or you know serve the tea then you know things suffer in uh during a church service or uh, in the body of christ so all of us have different functions um uh you know um, but all of us you know though we are many with different functions we are one body in christ and each of us as individual members have to fu uh, fu fulfill our functions too one another okay so it says in verse 5 so we being many are one body in christ and individually members of one another that means even though we are individual members in the body of christ but we are individual members we are not you know we are not uh, 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 individuals in the sense that we work independently but uh, we are individuals in the sense that we are interdependent on each other we need each other others need us and we need them in ephesians chapter 4 verses 11 and 12 uh, you know it says that you know and he which means uh, the holy spirit or god himself gave some to be apostles some to be prophets some to be evangelists some to be pastors and teachers so even in the body of Christ, we all have different, uh, you know, callings, different offices, but all of these callings and offices are important. Why? Because in verse 12, it says, for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, and for the edifying of the body of Christ. So all of these uh, 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 offices in the body of Christ are so important because all of these offices, uh, you know, help in equipping the saints and edifying the body of Christ. It's not saying edifying the local church. It's not saying it's edifying each of our own ministries, but it's edifying the body of uh, Christ. So what I'm saying here is, you know, that uh, like we just pointed out an important thing here. It says, you know, we need uh, each other each one of us are equally important in the body of uh, Christ and one more reference I like us to see is Ephesians chapter 4 verses 15 and 16 you know it uh, Paul says speaking the truth in love you know we need to grow up in all things into him who is the head that is Christ from whom the whole body is joined and knitted together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does it share causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love so here we see that you know um uh, the the church uh, is the body of christ and who is the head it's not the pastor it's not the bishop it's not you or i it's the christ is the head and it says here that you know um uh, all of us you know uh, have to do our share for the effective working of the body of Christ. So if the body of Christ has to work effectively, each one of us have to do our share. So we can't say, hey, I'm not a pastor, I'm not an apostle, I'm not a teacher. I'm just somebody who does, uh, you know, serves tea. I'm not important when well, you are important. Each one of us, you know, irrespective of what we are doing, each one of us, you know, when we do our, uh, our bit, when we, uh, we do what God has called us to do, it helps in effective working, which causes the growth of the body for the edifying of the church. Okay, the church is the body of uh, Christ. So this is something that we really need to understand this concept, put it in our minds, because, uh, you know, uh, this is where we can fall, you know, uh, this is where we can say, hey, you know, I don't want this person to step into my role because I have done all this hard work. I don't him, want him to take the glory and to reap all the uh, rewards uh, uh, or, you know, uh, we can say, I don't want to cooperate with him. Uh, let him do his own thing. I'll do my own thing. But it's so important in the body of Christ that we understand the head is Christ, that each one of us have to do our share. And when we do our share, it causes the board, the growth of the body of Christ and edifies self in love. And also we see that kingdom building is about Christ. Uh, Christ is the foundation and Christ is the starting point. 
okay so we'll stop here uh, we'll continue with the uh, chapter two anyone has any questions no questions okay Okay, thank you all for uh, joining class. Have a blessed week and I'll see you uh, next Wednesday. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Jeffina. Thank you, Ma. Thank you, Isaac. Thank you, Pastor.